All right, here's that uh, otter crossover that I set the other day and uh, got here this morning. First thing I thought is, oh shit, man, somebody stole my trap. But I got down in here, grabbed a hold of my drowner, gave her a pull, and right there is an otter tail. So that definitely worked out really, really good. I'm gonna go over there, we're gonna get him off. Um, this otter game is really, here we have a limited number of tags. I got one tag. So today I gotta go and pull all my otter sets, make sure I don't catch another one. Um, but really all you have to do to catch otter is find a good spot, a crossover, a place where they're gonna, you know, a bottom edge set or something like that. Set your traps, give it some time, and, and usually you'll, you'll succeed. So let me get over there because I do got that brick on this lodged in there. Oh, maybe we can get him to come. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I'm bringing up half the river, but we'll get him. All right. Wow, really, really nice otter. There he is. Really got a nice, solid, solid foot catch on him. He wasn't definitely not going anywhere. Uh, looks to be a female. But there it is. Otter trapping. It's just a, just a game of time. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for uh, tagging along. Yep. Hey guys, Sam with Sam Wood Outdoors here. It's time for another taxidermy video. We are going to be mounting an otter. I caught this otter this year on my trap line. I got him in a foothold and I have no damage really whatsoever. So that's gonna be good. We're not gonna have to fix anything like that. Um, got him tagged. I'm actually supposed to register him tomorrow, and which means as I gotta turn the carcass in. So I gotta get him skinned out tonight. So we're gonna go ahead, skin him out. This this video is not going to obviously be a one part half hour video. Um, again, like my other taxidermy videos, I want you guys to start being able to save some of them trophies. And you know, the economy's tight, and, and you guys can really, uh, taxidermy's not hard, it's just intimidating. So, let's get started. We're going to take the tag off so we can skin him. And when we tag an otter in Wisconsin, we got to go up through the lip and out the eye and then when we tag the carcass we have to put a tag on the carcass for the dnr or go through the jaw this is actually a very uh very old otter he's a big male otter and if you see uh his canine teeth are, are worn down pretty good they're, they're they're not even really sharp um i wouldn't even worry about trying to zoom in or zoom out let's just bring the camera down and, and do it like that so but anyways we got Jordan behind the camera. He's fairly new at it, but uh, we're going to do what we can do. All right, first thing we got to do is we got to get our measurements. Um, I do a couple of the measurements in the carcass, <coughs> you know, like this, and then I do a couple measurements when it's out. We got to do our A measurement, which is our nose to the corner of the eye. And we'll do that, obviously, with the fur on. So we're going to take that. And that is an inch and three quarter. And I'll transfer this later um, and that'll be uh, moved on. So the next measurement we would do around, some of the forms call for around the neck measurement. Some don't call for it. Some call just for a midsection measurement. And then we gotta get the whole length from the tip of the nose to the base of the tail. And then, I'm gonna measure this tail because when I get an otter tail in, I wanna be able to make sure it's gonna fit before I get it in there. So the, uh, the tail measurement is nothing to do with ordering. It's, it's just pretty much for my measurements. So anyways, let's get started. I know this seems intimidating, but it's really not, guys. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to skin or start to skin his mouth and his nose. I like doing that first from the outside because I can get, make sure I get really good cuts on it. So I'm going to take my glasses off because I just got bifocals and I, and I struggle. So Jordan, if you want to come down here, we're kind of going to show them what we're going to do. What we want to do is we want to save as much of this lip 
as we can. So we want to run our knife right along the gums, as tight as you can get, just like that. Because when we go and we split these lips, obviously the more lips we leave ourselves, the better off we're gonna be. Just the more, if you have to trim off just to uh, get your, uh, you know, if you got too much and you gotta trim it off, that's better than not having enough. Flip it over here so I can work on this bottom jaw. And like I said, we want to go right, right along. Now this is where you don't get a lot because you can see that front jaw is right there. That, or that front hairline and lip line is right there. And guys, you can do this all with a scalpel. I just choose to do it with a really sharp knife. We'll stay right along the gums there. And we'll just keep, keep working it down and and peeling it off, just like that. Take your time, we're in no rush. Back when I was in taxidermy school, it seemed like I could skin way faster than the other guys. And that, we got a little nick right there, and that'll be okay, we can fix that. Because this lower jaw is just really thin, the hair or the, the skin, there's not much meat between the lower jaw and the hide. It's like right there, there's no real muscle. So you wanna, you wanna face your knife more in than out. And you see I got that little nick right there? Again, guys, don't be intimidated if you nick something. We can always fix it. So we're getting this lower jaw going. And Jordan, if you have any problems with that camera or we gotta shut down for a minute or Anything, you just let me know. We just want this to be as good as we can possibly do. So then there we go. We're getting that lower jaw. And we're down there pretty good. We're meeting up um, kind of like in the back of the mouth there. Where the, right back in here where the two lip lines would meet. So once we get back there, well, we're doing pretty good. And you know, uh, keep your knives sharp when you're doing this or use a scalpel that's kind of the biggest secret so here we go we're going to work on this nose now and probably the easiest way we'll flip him over so you guys can see when we get to the top of the top of the jaw there then you'll see the nose will start to to recess back in there and we want to take again as much of that nose as we can get and listen guys even if you're not going to mount an otter, um, when the fur market is low, you can usually do better skinning him out for taxidermy. So now, see if, you, if we're hitting the nose here, and we're starting to cut through the cartilage of that nose. So you see that? There's his nostrils right there. So that's kind of where we want to be. Once we get through that nose, that's really all I'm going to skin from up here. We got this back here. We're almost to where it meets here and here. We'll get that from the inside and we'll come around and we'll be able to get that nose and it'll be really good. So now, when you do your otter, it's like any animal, you gotta figure out first how you're gonna mount it. And we're gonna mount this otter basically in a swimming position like this, because my idea is I'm gonna have him grabbing a muskrat and maybe the muskrat coming around and kind of biting him. So we're gonna have them, and they have a form that's like this. And then otter hide is fairly dense. So we're gonna do a dorsal cut here, and we're gonna be able to hide all of our stitching. It's not gonna be a problem. So the dorsal cut, we cut from here, and we come it on up, and I always go right to the base of the skull, and then we'll flip it over, and we'll do our leg cuts. And we're going to come down through the foot pad, and down to right about his, his elbow. On the back foot, we're gonna come down through the foot pad and right about here to what you would probably call his ankle. And then the bottom of the tail, we're gonna split all the way up to his anal vent. So then when the cuts we're gonna make, 
And uh, so let's get started. Now, it's like anything we mount. Always go in and then we work our knife like this. We never cut like this because then what we'll do is we're cutting that hair. We don't want to cut that hair. So we want to go in right here at the base of the tail and we want to run right basically up the center of the back and we want to hit, but we want to come from the, the uh, inside out because then that way we're not cutting any of that fur. It's just, uh, it's just basically splitting that open. And you can see we got very little fur on the knife and we got very little fur on the, on the carcass. So that's really what we want to do. And like I said, good sharp knife really, really helps. We're just going to keep go working our way up here. And take your time, guys. Don't let this intimidate you. Just like this. Just like that. And now we're almost to the base. I want to go right here, right to the base of the skull. You guys can make these cuts smaller if you want, but you know, it's going to be a struggle to get it in a form. I like things to go together nice and easy. And then I like to, uh, and I'm going to come down just a little bit further on the tail here. There we go. I like the things come in apart easy and I like to put them together easy and sewing. It's a lot of work, but it's not difficult. So we have that cut there Let's go over here and we'll start making our cut. So we're going to go right here, the middle of the pad at the base of the toe, just like that, right through the pad. Cause we can make, we can make that all disappear. It's not a problem. Some guys go right along the foot. I tried it a couple times and I just struggle. I just uh, kind of make them disappear. So we want to go like that. And we're in right there. We're right to that, right to that elbow. Same thing on the other side. Right through the pad. Kind of in between, once you get through the pad there, we want to go in between these two kind of pads right there. And then just right on down, basically to his elbow. And like I said, we're going to sew that up. You're never going to know it. Okay, back foot. Every otter I've ever seen has always got these little like calluses, man. I, the first time I caught him, I was like, well, what the heck is that? But it's just calluses. So right through that pad, Right on down, just like this, right to, right to that, be like that, his ankle joint, I guess is what you would call it. They don't have an ankle, well, I got an ankle just like us, that's her foot and there's her ankle. And we're going to do this one, right through that pad, just right down here, just right. Basically to right there, you can see that joint right there. And now the tail. And guys, you gotta get all the way to the tip of this tail because if you don't get all the meat out of here, it'll slip and the end of your tail will fall right off. So right down the middle of the tail, and we're gonna stitch that up, you're never gonna see it. Right down to the vent, right to there. So that's it. Them are all our cuts. So now you can just start skinning wherever you want. And I'm gonna start right here. Now, otter skin pretty good. Um, and you wanna take, and don't worry about getting all of that fat and everything off. Get as, don't, Try to leave as little as possible, but you know, this is all part of the game. We're gonna flesh this out. So we're just gonna keep skinning right on down here. It's taken really easy, you know. You can see right here, here's the carcass, the meat, here's the hide, and there's that thin layer right in between. You just touch it with your knife, and it'll open right up. Just take your time. Just like that. And remember guys, if you nick the hide, 
don't freak out. We're going to fix it. I, uh, I really enjoy doing taxidermy. I don't, I do have a taxidermist. He does a lot of my work. One, because I just, I didn't have a whole lot of time to do it. Um, when badass slingshots was growing, but now I'm getting the time and I, I like to mount. I, I was going to do it for a job one time and it just became, I, I didn't, I didn't enjoy doing it as much for everybody else and have to get up every day and do it. Um, you know, some people enjoy that kind of stuff and, uh, I did. And then I didn't, I didn't like it. it just became a job. And after a while, you just don't like to have a job. There we go, do that. We'll get down in here as far as we can by the tail. And then as you go guys, if you realize you gotta make a cut a little bit longer than when you started, that's okay, we can deal with that. Here we go, we're gonna work on his leg. I don't like to do a lot of pulling. This is not like skinning to sell your fur to a fur buyer. I don't like doing a lot of pulling. I think that just mucks up the hide. It messes with the uh, hair follicles and stuff like that. Believe me if you want. You can stretch it if you want. I just choose not to do it. So we're going here. Slowly working it around. We can get through here. And you know, I, I talked to the game warden, tried to see if I could save uh, these hind quarters and eat them. I was told, no, I have to surrender the whole carcass to the DNR for testing. It's just something the DNR has always done. And I don't know, I just don't know what kind of test they would ever do with the hind quarters. So I got my buddy, uh, Anchu Patak, Exotic Meat Markets guy, exoticmeatmarkets.com. He is, uh, he is going to uh, work on getting me some uh, otter hind courses so we can do a cooking video on what an otter tastes like, which would be very interesting because I've never eaten an otter. And uh, obviously the meat looks rich and dark, and so I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, they eat fish, so I don't, I'm kind of nervous about how that's gonna taste. So now, let's roll them over and uh, I was gonna work on this foot, but I'm gonna work on it from the other way. It's just gonna be easier. So we're getting them going here. Just like that, just keep working it around. And now I'm coming to my cut there. So you're gonna you know, be like, oh my God, I, I, I tore the hide, but that's actually our cut. And that is going to make skinning that foot out just a lot easier. So we're going to keep going here. And uh, what it also does is when it comes time to get this and put it on the form, it's just going to make it a lot easier to manipulate this onto the form. It gives us a uh, I guess carper uh, woodworkers would call it a relief cut. So that's kind of how that is. So another way of doing this, and which we're probably going to do here, is we are going to uh, cut this off here right at the joint. Because it will just make it easier for us to manipulate it and move it around when we're skinning it and we are going to skin it finish skinning out that foot use our scissors it's just a hard you gotta work it down through that joint there we go ten snips works really good too and I just uh, my Tim snips are actually out in my trapping bucket. So, we'll get her. 
There it is. So we got that foot done. And we got that leg done. Start working on this side. Otter tail and porcupine tail um, and mink tail. Mink not so much. But they're, they're weird. They're kind of uh, really wide, you know. It's uh, not like you can use a tail stripper on them that easy. So we're just going to skin this baby down here. Keep working it. And listen, guys, you know, when you're doing this, you don't want to have it overly warm because we don't want to have the fur slip. And it's already bad enough you're using your warm hands on it. And you're not doing this very fast like we would if we were uh, skinning it out for the fur market. Oh, that was a close one. We almost nicked the hide, but we didn't. We're getting up here by the front. All right, let's work on this back leg now. like that. Mountain Dew Break. You ever skin anything out, Jordan? Uh, no. Well, then that's good. So, if you got any questions or you got something that somebody might ask, you know, or would be asking, just uh, let me know and we can stop and discuss it because uh, some of our people that are going to be watching this video probably have never skinned an otter before neither. So, it would be interesting if you had a question, if they had the same question. And even if they didn't, Jordan doesn't get paid. Jordan gets paid by experience and being able to hang out with me. If that's any kind of being some kind of payment, it's probably more of a penalty. <laughs> All right, we gotta get, there we go. Now we're through there. There's our cut that we made. So we're working down there. Like I said, don't pull. If you gotta, you gotta pull a little bit. That's just no ifs, ands, or buts but let's keep that pull into a minimum. <clears throat> and I suppose this is probably uh, not the easiest thing to film the way I move around a lot, but hopefully we're, the, the main thing is, is you're gonna get, they're gonna get the general idea if we miss something, so don't freak out. But. And guys, again, if by chance you decide you're going to do a skinning video or a taxidermy video, technically, I don't know so much about a skinning video. They haven't messed with me on that. But I have talked to the DNR of Wisconsin. And being there is a chance where I get paid through uh advertising on here or sponsorship like from Van Dykes or something I have to have a taxidermy license so just keep that in mind guys if you're gonna do this video um, and I encourage you to do it I don't I don't want anybody to think that I'll be the only guy doing this go ahead but just cover your ass don't uh, don't fall victim to uh, a ticket that you really, you know, you're not trying to get away with anything, neither am I, but I do have a taxidermy license and uh, that allows me to do this video. So there we go, we got that. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this, we're gonna work this down here, we're gonna work this tail out and then we're gonna work on the front of that otter. So let's start here on the tail tail on these things is amazing. Powerful, powerful tails. Lots of muscle. 
but that's because, and lots of fat, that's because this is what the otter uses when he's underwater to basically help make him turn fast. Imagine an otter chasing a trout, and a trout can move really fast. That otter has to be able to do that, and that's part of what his tail does. Um, same way like with lions, uh, they use their tail a lot when they're running to, uh, to make them turns, the cheetahs. Kind of all the same thing, you know, the otter is probably the lion of the, uh, oh, nick that tail a little bit. The lion is probably, or the otter is probably the lion of the, 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 the underground world there. Got another little nick in the tail, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna fix them. It's no big deal. So we're getting down here to the bottom and we could probably pull that tail right out of there. Man, they, are, they got some tough tails. They've got nothing but muscle and fat on that tail. And I'm not quite, there we go. I wasn't quite to the base of that tail. And like I said, guys, you wanna make sure you get all of this tail out of here, all of this bone, and then we gotta flesh it really, really good because we don't want our otter tail to fall right off. So there we go, we're right down, there's no bone in there whatsoever and it's split all the way to the end. I don't, as some guys would say, oh, leave that, there's no sense to sew in that. You can, uh, you can uh, pump preservative down there. Yes, you can. And I'm not pulling very hard on this, guys. I'm not stretching that out. You can pump all the preservative you want down there, but if you miss it, you know, you would dump preservative and take a wire and shove it down in there. If you miss it, you're gonna, your hair is gonna slip, the hair is gonna fall off, the, the meat's gonna rot, the hide's gonna rot right there, and uh, you're gonna lose the tip of your tail. I've seen it a lot in fox, a lot of, Fox, they do, they mount, they lose the tip of their tail. And that's because they don't get all the way down to the base. So you can see this is really, really fatty. And we wanna get as much of that. We're gonna, we're gonna take and we're gonna flesh this out. It's not gonna be tonight because, I, I, it's getting late. Jordan had to work late tonight, so. And the other thing is, is I don't want to have it exposed to heat that long. Because like I said, we're not doing this for the fur market. We're doing this for taxidermy. And we gotta handle it a lot. So, all right. We're getting down to about where we need to be here. Just like that. And no, and no worries guys, we're gonna we're gonna flesh all of this off of here. So that's good, we got it all the way down to there. Got that to that. So now, let's work more on just getting this hide out of here. So you don't get to keep any of the otter meat? Nope, None that all, all has to get turned into the DNR. They, you know, I could see keeping the skull. Yeah. Cause they can do uh, some kind of aging and testing on it. it ticks me off that I got to. Um, I can see turning in basically this part because they would maybe want to cut them open and see what they've been eating and Wait, stuff like that. Yeah. But eh, I don't know. I think it's just bull crap that but they want to. you should be able to catch more than one. <clears throat> well, and, and now DNR from Wisconsin says we don't have a lot of otter here. And uh, most trappers would beg to differ. Um, and I think the way they count sucks. They go and they supposedly fly over with airplanes and count the, uh, like on lakes, uh, or not lakes, but rivers, and count the slides and everything else. What gets me about that is, uh, supposedly the DNR don't have any airplanes left. Uh, the governor, last governor, took them away or something. So, I don't know, you just, you know, it, you just don't get a lot of straight answers. And, and, they, and I do question them a lot on a lot of stuff. And the more I question them, the more I just scratch my head. And I think they're so used to the average guy asking them a question and then believing their bullshit that, uh, 
it is what it is. I tell you what I am going to keep off this otter. It's a nice male otter. And we are going to keep... We're going to keep his pecker. <laughs> um, I do a lot. I, had a, I got a lot of coon peckers. But I don't have an otter pecker. So we're going to dry that out. And then... Uh, I don't know, we're going to do something with it, but they ain't getting my coot and my otter pecking. So we're just just kind of working this around. We're, our two cuts are, are meeting up right here, you can see that. Um, so we're just going to keep going down like this. I just did a video on uh, eating uh, bull testicles, and otter testicles here seem pretty small, so we're not even going to waste our time with them. But I'll tell you what. Just like a mink, they do have glands, and I might keep them glands, because you know what? I don't know. You know, uh, otter, guys just kind of think otter are really hard to catch. I don't think an otter is really hard to catch. They're actually pretty easy to catch. It's more of a time game. Make, make it a, if you know otter in the area, make a few good sets, and then just wait for them to come around. Um, otter here, um, basically where I set for one of my good spots for otter is close to a, a state-run fish hatchery. So we got some glands right there that we don't want to cut into. Um, so they have, uh, they, they don't run as big a circle. They don't need to keep moving around. Um, if an otter gets in an area and there's a lot of food, he will stick into that area for a, an extended period of time. If there's not a lot of food, they will move around. So it's just, uh, like I said, trapping otter is just a waiting game. We got a pretty kick-ass otter trapping video going up. Uh, it will be posted, or probably by the time this is posted, it'll already be up. So if you want to learn how to trap otter, you can. Here we go, we got the tail out. Just a matter of meeting, getting all of this to meet up here. Uh, and there's them glands. If you were a big otter trapper and you had a lot of otter and, and you had to catch more than one otter a year, I would say keeping these glands right here would be a good thing. And then there's his anus. So that's that. So now we're going to move on up here. Just keep moving up. right up to the front of the otter. It's not that hard, guys. It's really, uh, probably the thought of doing this is more intimidating than actually doing it. So here we go here. Soon as we're done with it, we're gonna get that tag back on there and then we're gonna get the uh, tag on the carcass. And then, like I said, we'll come back in here in a couple of days and we're a f maybe a week or so and we're going to flesh this otter out. I'm going to freeze it because actually fleshing an otter for taxidermy um, will go a lot easier. I'll be honest with you guys, I've never done an otter for the fur market. I've always sold them to the taxidermy market or we've tanned them. With the, with the feet in, um, we don't make this cut when we tan them with the feet in. We just tan, cut it up there because we're not going to have to get it into a form, so we're not going to have to have them relief cuts. And uh, nine times out of ten, you will sell them more in the taxidermy market or tanned than you would have ever got on the fur market, selling them at auction or to a local buyer. Also, guys, when you're selling these hides, I don't know about other states, but here in Wisconsin, you can only sell hides to a fur buyer or a taxidermist. So if you have a buddy who wants to buy your otter from you, you need to sell it to the taxidermist that is going to mount it, and then he will in turn sell it to your buddy. That's the legal way of doing it. That's the way that's going to keep you out of trouble. 
I don't know about other states because I don't live in other states. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up. But if you tan it, if you tan it, you can sell it to whoever you want. Now these front feet, you can cut off right here, but you don't have as much to hold on to as you would on the back. So we're just gonna go ahead and skin this down, right down to the toes. And you just work that through, just like this. Right, just take that, just skin it, just keep going like you would. Don't even be intimidated because that pad's there or anything. Just like that. And you start to see the toes coming. So we're gonna get the backside here. Now guys, take your time right here. You can fix a mistake here or a cut, but it's a lot harder to hide. So you just wanna keep going just like this, right along, right where that hide and that foot meet, just like this. Just take your time. Now, what I like to do, get yourself a needle nose pliers, and you kind of grab a hold of that first toe there, and get that worked up, and then you can kind of twist it like this with your chest, and you can get right, right on down there. I'm putting pressure on this part of the pliers, and what that's doing is kind of bringing that around. And then you come around here, this is where you're gonna have, if your knife is dull, sharpen it up or change your scalpel blade or whatever right here. So now, we're getting down there. We wanna get down there almost to that uh, toenail. And if we don't wanna go too far, cause then we'll cut that dang toenail off and that'll be a pain in the butt. So we wanna just get down as far as we can there. What's gonna happen is we're gonna fill this up with clay. And get your players in there, grab a hold of that, and then kind of feel where you're at. We are just right there. So then, we're gonna take and get our scissors through there. Cut that baby off. Now if you see, and you put your finger in there, we're right there. We got a little bit of that pad maybe we can, we'll get out later, but we just wanna get right down as close to that as we can. Because we wanna get as much out of there as we can because it's gonna slip if we don't. So now get your next toe working. And you can see how I'm stretching that. So when I hit it with my knife, and we're working this toe right here. This is the one we're working on. And then work on that one. Sometimes we gotta get all of these other ones a little bit further. See that? And then just kind of feel where we're at. Let's, uh, Work some more on this back side. It's like this, just work it on down. Work them pads. And work some of these other ones down a little further. Same way with the, the, the bottom as we do the top. Sometimes to get in there a little bit further, we have to take another toe. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that I am right, almost done with this toe. So let's just finish this toe off as we go, because it's shorter. So as we were working on this one and peeling them back, we got to where this one is almost done. So you can switch toes right down to that joint. There it is. So now we'll just keep working it down. 
And guys, if you're gonna skin for the taxidermy market and you are, are not comfortable doing this down to the toes, you would take and cut that off right here. You know, give that taxidermist something to grab onto and he'll do it for you, don't worry. You know, you'll get a, the further you can do it, the better your money you'll make. But if you don't know how to do it, you'll end up costing yourself money because a taxidermist, he's, he's not going to pay for, uh, pay you to help him or make it harder for him to fix. So that one's down there. This one's got to go just a little bit more. That one's down there. Now this one. It's kind of just like taking a pair of gloves off of him, I guess. That one, feel that joint right there. There it is. Now if you see, we're right down to that. Right down in there, you can see when we we'll stick something dull in there. See, we're right down in that pad and we're right there to the top of that toenail. So that one's good. On to the next one. Keep rolling your knife around and keep working that hide off, just like that. All right, guys, I am going to sharpen my knife. This is my knife sharpener that I use for taxidermy. It's a lot, it gets a lot better edge than I could ever do with a steel. Some guys are really good with a steel. I'm okay and not good. Shave the hair off your arms. See? Shave the hair off your arms. It's plenty sharp doing what we're gonna do. Some guys use a scalpel. I I'm okay with a scalpel. I like using a knife. I'm more, I guess would you say I'm more comfortable with a knife because I use a knife so much. So we gotta be just about through. Yep, just about. There it is. So now we're through there. And we're going to go down here and we're going to skin out our pad and get down in there. Almost cut through. See right there, that was close. Just take your time. All right. There we go. I'd like to point out that 
On your more precise cuts, you're also using just the tip of your knife? Just the tip of my knife, yep. So that's why I say that's where you got to make sure it's sharp. This time when I sharpen a knife, and most of the time I don't even pay much attention down here. I get it like from here to here, you know, and I like to be able to hold it a little different than you would when you're, you know, when you're, you're skinning for taxidermy, it's a whole different deal than when you're skinning for the fur market. Not any harder, really. Um, just, just a little, you know. If I had this sharp a knife and I was skinning a coon for the fur market, I would end up nicking the hide just because I'm going a little bit faster. I'm not paying that much attention. So I don't like a really, really sharp tip knife when I'm skinning coons. Just because I go a little bit faster and you're pulling. So now let's get our pliers through there. Give ourselves a little pulling. Get a little tension on there. You can see we're just about where we need to be on that one. And I think this was the leg, I think this is the leg I caught him in, and you can see, you know, them, them, uh, them friggin' bunny-hugging Disney educated sons of bitches. You can see no leg damage, no bruising, no nothing there. No leg damage, no bruising, no nothing there. Um, I did get him in a drowning set, so he didn't live very long. He probably run himself right out there and drowned and done, and very little struggling. So I don't like to catch otter in anything but a drowning set or a conna bear, just because. Man, if you ever got to let one of these dirty dogs go, you will know that they ain't, they are no joke. Where did I do my scissors underneath you? <laughs> they are no joke. All right. We ran out of storage space on that chip, so we have to switch. So we're back at her. Let's finish off this. One here is good enough. Down there, off. We got one more. It's right there. Done. All right, now we'll move right on up to the head. Start pulling that back. And right here we're at the, we're down by the throat area, so. Coming up here to the top of the head. Okay, ears and eyes. Um, again, when you're for the fur market, not quite as important as it is for the taxidermy market. Or if we, for your otter, if you're mounting your otter right now with this video, you're definitely, this is a, this is where we're going to want to pay a little bit of attention. So we're getting up here, and we're going to come along, and we're going to be at the base. See his ear right here? We're right at the base of the ear. When we get there is where we want to start going down like this. Right there is his ear, canal, and you see we left a lot of the ear on the hide. See it right there? That's the ear. We want to leave as much of this on the hide as we can so we cut way down in there. And then we come back down through the back side just like that. And that's what we got. Gives us plenty of uh, ear cartilage to work with when we take the cartilage out of there. And it gives us plenty of uh, what we need to make this uh, otter mount look kick ass. So again, here's the base of his ear. You'll see it, it'll kind of be like a tuck of, tuft of skin there. So we want to cut that down there as far as we can and then come in and work right underneath it, just like this. So there you go, there's the ear. Plenty of room on that whole ear. They don't have very big ears, 
So we wanted to save that. Now we're working down. The next thing we're gonna come do is the eye. It's gonna be your next major obstacle is the eye. And we're coming to that. And again, here's his eye. If you flip it over, you can see we're right there. There's his eye, the corner of his eye. Is, and then that's where we wanna take our knife and switch from going like this to basically cutting down. Right there. So we want as much of that eye lid as we possibly can have. So you see his eye right there? And we took as much of that eyelid as we could. Get around here. Now we're gonna work his jaw be right here. So we're gonna work that around, just like that. If you want, you can hang this over the edge of the table. And it'll help you work with it and give you that pressure you need. Flip it over here. We're going to get this eye on the other side. Right there. We're coming to that eye. So you notice I switched from going like this to now I'm going down into the skull. This will definitely dull your knife. So you're lucky you're getting towards the end. There's his eye. We want to save as much of that lid as we can. And you'll see we're starting to get to that little tear duct there. We want all of that with the eye. You see how we saved all that? We basically got the whole eyelid away from the eye, right? There, you see that? So when we go to mount that, we'll be able to tuck that in and pin it and it'll look just sweet as sweet can be. Now, like I said, right there's the lip. And we got that. We want to stay right next to that jaw. And then pretty soon we're going to meet up right there is with our other cuts. So we got that whole thing. We left. A, we took all that lip. All that lip came with it. So when we split that lip, we'll have all of that to go with it. So there's that lip right there. Here's the eye. We're going to save all that eyelid. Just like that. Get down here, we got all the nose. See how we're taking all that lip? All that lip and all of that eye. So there you go. We got the nose, we got plenty of cartilage to work when we split that nose and skin that out. We got everything, the eyelid is not cut and you can see we got that skin underneath there to help it tuck it in there. We got plenty of the ear here. Right here, we got plenty of that cartilage. So that face and head, that freaking came out perfect. So tuck it like that, we got everything. This otter, we're gonna do that carcass. We have the back feet we're gonna do here real quick. Same thing now. Just flip that baby over. Get a hold of it like this and just start working it out. Now you're gonna think it seems a little bit harder to work with this because we don't have that carcass to hold this, but you're gonna find out it's a lot easier because we don't have that carcass in the way and to keep rolling it. I get just like that. Let me sharpen my tip again because when you do the skull, the skull, when you even when you're skinning for a fur market, that skull is like porcelain and you're running your knife straight up and down. It really dulls them fast. A lot better.
And I think I said that pliers in there just gives me a, another place to add a little leverage. Pull through. You can keep moving it around to the different toes. This is just uh, pliers from my welding shop. You can use any needle nose pliers. You can use your belly. You got a belly like I do. It's kind of nice to be a chubby little guy doing this. Just keep skinning that down, working it down. And you kind of can't do one at a time. You kind of got to do them all as a whole until you get down to where you start popping them out with the shortest one first. And you see this is the shortest one and we kind of got him almost there. And get your finger in there. Man. There it is. Pop that out. That's the toenail. Just be careful when you use that scissors that you're popping through the joint, not cutting uh, the, the toe off through the hide. That'll suck bag. Got that one. You know, you guys can, I can give you all the pointers in the world about how to do this. And you can read all the books and do everything. It's nothing gonna be like you can do if you just get out there and do it. And, and don't be afraid to, to do it. Don't be afraid to try it. I made, uh, I worked on a knife today, made a knife. I never made a knife in my life. Didn't have really no idea. Watched a couple of YouTube videos and then I just did it. And Melissa said it looks like a shank, but that's okay. I'm gonna, when I finish it, I'm gonna put a little antler handle on it and I'm gonna turn it into a little knife like this for skinning and, and you know what? It's just pretty freaking cool because I made it myself. I don't want to get, let me check that. It seems like I'm down there, but I'm not. Oh no, I got a little ways to go on that yet. These ones are a little bit longer. There we go. There we got it. That one. And got that one. There it is. Well, we got that toe and foot all done. Now well, let's get this bad boy done. And then we're done with part one of taxidermy in an auto and also skinning it out for the taxidermy market the more you know the more money you can make guys years where the, the market's really down like they did this year you can make more money doing it like this or mounting it for yourself and if or mounting it and if you do a really good job you can really sell it for a lot of money. So, you know, you can, uh, I guess I never thought of that. A guy could really make some money with his fur if he got into the taxidermy end of it. Got a little lick there that we'll have to fix. No big deal. further here. We ain't got much skinned out on this side. We're going to have to work on the bottom here.
That one's not down quite so far. Wouldn't. There we go. Listen, guys, if you get there and you grab that scissors and you go to cut and you feel you're get, not cutting through a joint, you're cutting through bone, you got to stop. Can't cut through bone. We got to cut through that joint. If you're cutting through bone, you don't have it skinned down far enough. Don't take shortcuts, dude. Let's do it right. Don't take shortcuts. Everything we do more and precise this stage of the game, the better off we're gonna be on the next stage of the game. And the better off you're gonna be when we finish this thing up and how kick-ass it looks on the wall. And then how kick-ass it looks on the wall five years from now. Well, I gotta go a little further on that one yet. There's that joint right there. That's where we want to be. I went to school to the John Reinhardt School of Taxidermy here in Janesville, Wisconsin. I learned from some great people. John's dead now. He used to own Taxidermy Supply. Uh, I think his kid, uh, Dan, is carrying on. And let me tell you, you guys know Reinhardt Archery Targets. Let me tell you a story. Um, I, I, I used to stick around and after class and to kind of talk to Dan, his son, was an amazing, amazing fish painting. Uh, he's just amazing. And I used to talk to him a lot. He'd be in there working after hours. And it's kind of like getting that. Uh, I'd learn a lot from him. I really would. And I love painting fish. And, and I got that from Dan Reinhardt. But uh, old John, he used to like to drink, and we'd go down to a bar called Slick's in Janesville and have us a Slick Burger. And uh, John was developing the Reinhardt target system. And uh, I actually got to shoot a ton of arrows into the first one. And I can't remember, it was either a, a mountain lion or a wolf. I'm pretty sure it was a wolf, it was his first prototype. And I got to shoot a lot of arrows into that thing and testing it. And we, anyways, we was down to Slicks one day having a burger. And I said, John, you need to make a target, just a little round or square target that a guy can carry and kind of shoot from his tree stand and stuff like that. And John said to me, Sam, I don't think that would ever sell. Now, Reinhardt, one of their best selling targets, a little target about that big around, a round one, and it's got a rope to carry it with and everything else. So, ah, one of them deals, I probably missed out on a million dollars. But it was okay because you know what? Oh, geez, are you going to hang in there? What are you drinking? But John, I learned a lot from him. So, there we go. We got it all skinned out. We're ready to go. We're going to put our tag. Oh, yeah, we'll put our tag back on this right away. It goes through the eye and the jaw. So we'll do that. Jeez, you almost killed yourself. I did. And then we're gonna get this baby in the freezer and come back and we'll flush it and everything in part two. Now, measurements. We're gonna do our measurements. Our B, C, and D measurement. All right. <laughs> this is uh, nose to eye. And I believe B is around here. So we got this. That's uh, 16 and a half. Nice big tub. Yep. And then uh, we'll do the, uh, the nose to the tip of the tail which was 26, we'll use that as our C, nose to tail, 26 did I say? Yep. 26, and then I want to do this tail measurement just so I can get, when I do my otter it's going to fit in there 
and we're not going to be dinking around. So that's going to be 16. And then around the base, it's going to be four and a half. So I don't even know what that is. I should have measured this out when I had him first time. 42 with the hide on, he would have been uh, 43 or 44 inch otter. That's a damn good otter. Pretty proud of that. So now we got to, I'm going to slice this for the, the carcass tag. Sucks, I'm not going to keep the skull neither. That's where I'm going to put the carcass tag wire through there. But there you go. You can see how them canines are wore right down. Pretty friggin' awesome. There's an old otter. All right. That's it, guys. We're done. We're going to wrap up part one, skinning an otter for taxidermy.